Okay, welcome back. This is part five of the uh, Corvette build. Um, so I'm still on the, uh, the the gun platform here. And um, if you look sort of closely at the edge of this, let's get that in focus, um, you'll see that there's lots and lots of little slots all the way around the edge. And they're designed to take these photo etch um, cradles which are all these parts here and there's 36 of them and they're designed to hold the uh, the ammunition um, which is in white metal which you can see on these uh, sort of little sprues in there um, now when you look at the actual kit parts themselves these are the ones out of the Revell matchbox kit uh, they're basically just wedges with sinkholes on the side with a tiny half shell on the top. So they don't really look like what they should do. Um, and when you look at the instructions, the instructions um, show you to put these together out of these three brass parts, which I've just shown you on the fret. And there's the white metal shell in the top. Now that's all well and good, but when you actually see the actual size of these parts, and here they are now. In fact, that one's stuck to my finger. Uh, and you'll see that the actual dimensions of these, they're tiny. And I did try putting one together, and it pretty much, as you bend in the parts to come together, these tiny little arms are just snapping in two, snapping off. Um, it's, you know... It's, it's a non-starter really um, so I thought well how am I going to get around this now the original idea was I thought well maybe I could sort of dress up the kit parts you know these um, these wedges with these parts but that doesn't look particularly nice and you'd have to scrape this um, shell off the top and then sort of cut it out and replace it and, and you know you, you sort of there's no point in doing that so what I've decided to do instead is to put them together like this. I've modified the parts and I've attached the, the, the two parts that I've modified. I'll have to get a pair of tweezers here to think to pick this up because it's so tiny. Um, let's have a look if we can see this a bit better on the tweezers. So basically... I've attached the parts in the position they should be in um, on a, a tiny bit of styrene strip. And um, I'm going to do that to all 36. And I've, I've cut these these little flimsy arms off them. You can see that how tiny the arms are there. And they've got these like little triangular brackets on. Uh, but by the time you've cleaned them up, there's, there's virtually nothing left. And they don't bend very well. And they just come off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this method here. And those little arms that have broken off, I'm just going to put some pieces of wire between the two, uh, two uprights here to, to make it look like those arms. Um, I can't solder anything because they're, they're just too delicate. Um, so I'm going to have to rely on um, super glue. But um, you can see how, you know, the, the, I've got a chance with these. Now, I measured between the two um, slots in this part here. And if you go from where the steps are, which is here, um, this is this is where it actually starts. So the distance between those two slots there, which is where these pieces fit in, is five millimeters. So in order to be able to cut everything accurately, um, I've used this and this is um i got this i think i bought this from the states actually um but i don't know whether it's available in the uk there, there are some plastic versions of this available but this is the original cast metal one so this is the northwest short line chopper and it's basically just a single-sided razor blade and you use it as a guillotine um and the actual styrene that i've used just in case anyone's watching this and thinks well actually yeah i'd like to do that 
it's this size here. So it's uh, evergreen um, 0.28 by 1.68 strips and um, 8106, I think the code is. And uh, obviously this is a piece of that and you essentially set the set the length you want using this stop here and you just come down and that chops off you've got to be careful because you don't want to drag your finger against the razor blade um, and uh, I'll have to poke it out of the pencil there and then you end up with these tiny strips but they all end up exactly the same size which is what you want so if you're ever going to get into scratch building and things like that and you want consistent parts these are invaluable and i've used this thousands of times for loads of different jobs when i, when I want to make something exactly the same size uh, there's no real um alternative really and you can do angles on it you can do all kinds of stuff the, the, these pieces come with angles attached um but um you know really invaluable tool if you can get hold of one or as I say, they do make a, a, a slightly cheaper plastic version, which is, is possibly okay. I don't know, but um, I've never used one. I've only ever used this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I've cut all these parts out here, all these little styrene bits, and I'm going to clean all these up now and then attach them like that. And then once I've done that, I've got to cut a load of tiny little bits of wire the right length which I'll do on the chopper and then I'll be able to attach them. And it's a long job and I've got 36 to make. I might cheat slightly because on the rear of this, I've, I've not really looked close enough in the instructions yet, but on the rear of this, some um, Corvettes had some lockers in place of some of these shells. So I might go for that option. Um, as I say, I'm not, worried that you know the snowbree may or may not have had them i'm building this as a kind of um hybrid one really just to suit myself really um so i may put some lockers on to add a bit of interest there and this will it'll do away with some of these so maybe if i do the 36 but i've got maybe three or four that you know that aren't as good as as the rest i'll leave those off and i'll replace those with the lockers um one more thing to note is i've uh let's just switch the view again um i've cleaned up the white metal um piece that goes on here that just simply glues in place um and then there's this piece which is the mount for the gun and this has to have some uh, little tiny wheels and things attached to it. I've made those up. They're out of etched brass. There's a few more pieces to go on. Here's the... Uh, I can't remember which way around this goes now, but this this has got... See, the hole there fits into the yoke there. And then that's that's your, um, your main barrel. And there's various other bits and pieces to go on it, but that's just something else to add detail to it. But the detail on this, it's really nice. It's got the bolt heads in there. And, um, you know, it, it adds a little bit of weight to this. As I say, the overall weight of this kit is going to be quite heavy once it's uh, completed. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'll push on with these and then uh, I'll come back on and uh, show you the progress. So after probably three nights work, I've ended up with um, this almost finished um, main gun and uh, the platform. And uh, as you can see, I mean, it, you know, the, the, my finger gives an idea of the scale. Um, there's an awful lot of work gone into this since since I was I just putting the, the base part together. Um, the um, brass mesh that forms the sort of fence all the way around um, was a bit of a nightmare to fit uh, trying to get it to, to you know follow that um, curve um, these stanchions that uh, are here that 
but um, really easy to put with a pencil actually. Um, so these stanchion parts here um, are made up of two halves. So they're two very, very thin pieces with detail on the outside and you need to fit them together. So I managed to tap them together with super glue and then just put a tiny little bit of solder in order to stop them springing apart over time. Um, but they've got an incredibly tiny hole in the top there, which the camera's not going to pick up. Um, and I need to run a wire through them to form the um, the sort of rail that goes around the outside. Now, the only thing I can think to put through there is probably some 3 amp fuse wire. Um, so uh, I need to source some of that in order to sort of put some straight. So although this is all curved, when you look on the photographs, the actual line that runs between these posts is actually flat. So it's sort of segmented. So I'll try and start at one end and, and feed it all the way through like a piece of uh, piece of string. Um, but I mean, even cotton wouldn't go through these holes. They're so tiny. Um, so I'll have a look around for that. The gun itself, um, you can see it's made up of you know mainly um, white metal, uh, and then it's got these various brass parts attached to it. You can see the sights there and there. Um, incredibly fiddly to put together. There's uh, some little uh, sort of traverse wheels and you know things they'd use to steer the gun. Uh, they're made up of two parts and then there's this little shaft that goes underneath and there's a handle. You can just about see the handle. Uh, where are we? There at the back. I'll turn that round a bit for you to see that a bit better there. Um, the only issue I've got, I think, when, when I finally come to put this together, um, this piece here, uh, which is the sort of toothed gear, which I presume is to do with the elevation. I think I've inadvertently put it in back to front because it seems to overhang too far there. However, once the gun shield's on, it's completely invisible anyway, so I'm, I'm not going to attempt to take this apart in order to rectify that. It only came apparent when I actually came to put the the, the pieces together. Um, you can see there's another wheel on the other side there with a handle, and there's various other pieces attached to it. Um, if I just lift that off for a second there, and um, you can see on the platform, you can see these slots at the back, which is where those um, gun, uh, sorry, the uh, ammunition cradles uh, would go. Now, I've made all these up now. They just need some tiny rails attaching to the outside. Um, there's one of them there. I don't know if that'll focus maybe a little bit closer. No, come back a bit. There you go. Um, so I've got all those made up. There's 36 of those, so they need gluing in around the edge. Um, and obviously the ammunition attaching. Uh, the ammunition itself is white metal. It's on a little sprue uh, or a sort of casting gate, really. Uh, so these all need cleaning up, so the, there's a bit of work to do there. I also built the lockers. Let's push that to one side for a minute. These tiny lockers, um, which have got lids and sort of locking handles. And it does mention in the instructions that some Corvettes, I don't know about this particular one, had three of these around the back of the platform. So... I may add those just for a bit more um, sort of interest. Um, the other major part for this was the um, the gun shield. Um, and this is made up, um, I think earlier on, I showed the, you know, the sort of the box section. But I've had to add all these tiny parts. Uh, and these are all folded frames. Uh, sort of L section frames that are all folded out of brass. Little ribs attached to the top of these. This round 
uh, sort of well, rather oval part here is made up of three layers that have all been stuck together and then attached and inside um, you can see the sort of fairly complex um, framing that uh, holds this to the gun now I did do a test fit and um, it's just about possible to squeeze the gun in uh, without sort of bending any of these out of the way um, but I'm gonna have to paint all this and paint the gun before this finally gets attached um, the sad thing is once it's on and once it's all in position and if you've got the gun facing forwards as you generally would have or thereabouts um, most of this isn't seen so it's, it's nice to know it's in there but um, it was quite fiddly to put together and lots of clamps uh, and crocodile clips and things to hold it together while I was soldering um, but out, outside it, it looks good so obviously the sights on the gun uh, which if I bring the gun back in here um, so those those sights here where's the other one there um, they're seen through or they look through these two windows here um, the instructions recommend building a blast bag to go on the outside of this out of uh, milliput so i may look at doing some like that because they would have been fitted with a with a, with a bag on there you know to um uh, it's sort of the transition between this frame which i'm assuming is where the bag would have been attached and the um the barrel so i'll have to try and construct something that i can paint and then just slip over the the barrel to sort of slide it onto to here so i'll figure that out um and uh, the only other thing to add which i'm, I'm not i've been looking at references and it's hard to get any kind of um real handle on what it is I'll put the instructions there it's this sort of rail here now it it says that it's made out of wire it's not supplied as a part there are holes in the deck to attach it to but th there's no dimensions given um some photos show something like that and others don't um and it's not even mentioned in the instructions it's just shown on here so i'll have to sort of have a look at some more references and see how that looks i don't know whether it's maybe something to make the gun elevate it can't drop below a certain point so it can't sort of shoot the front of the the, the ship off i don't know it's like a shield but um anyway i'll look into that and see see how that works um the only other thing i've got left to do really uh, on this is um is build the steps that come down to the deck from the two um or, or sort of entrances onto this um so uh overall you know as i say a lot of work gone into this but it, it does look fantastic and the difference between this and the kit part there's just an absolutely no comparison um so it's definitely worth the effort um but you know it's um a lot of work's gone into it so um i think i might take a break from this bit now and move on to something else just to you know maybe you know build some of the 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 dinghies or something you know just to to sort of break up the build a little bit because uh, some of this was really testing my patience and it was it was it was a bit of a struggle to get it together um but um you know worth the effort but at times I, I was i was well not ready to give up but um just losing my mind really about you know how how i was going to get the, the parts to fit um but i'm very pleased with the results so um there's been quite a few people commenting about how 
um, you know, it's nice to see this built as is because th- th- I think there's quite a few people with these parts, but they've never had the courage to, you know, start building it. So hopefully, this might spur people on to thinking, well, yeah, I could, I could do that. Because as I say, my soldering skills are fairly new in terms of brass, and as I go along, I'm finding it easier and easier to do. Um, most of the um, most of the challenge really is just holding the parts together while you apply the heat to melt the solder. So um, I might do a, another sort of brief video of um, putting some of the parts together. I know I, know I did that test uh, video, you know, the little tutorial, but um, maybe as I get onto other parts, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show how I'm putting them together. And um, so uh, I'll I'll post this video shortly, or it'll, you, in fact you're watching it, so it'll be posted, um, you know, as you're watching it. And uh, I'll um, I'll be back on with uh, something else uh, as we go along. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, you know, feel free to comment. I've had quite a lot of new subscribers. I'm uh, you know I don't go big on subscribers i'm not i'm not chasing um subscriptions or you know trying to monetize the 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 the, um page or anything like that but um i'm just happy to pass on uh a bit of knowledge and you know you know my my mistakes as i go along so um thanks again for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next video